Good morning, Summit. We're so glad you're here with us. If you will go ahead and stand and sing along with us.
from a deep but empty grave. So I will praise you on the mountains. Now praise you in the mountains in my way. You're the summit where my feet are. So I will praise you in the valleys all the same. No. Thank you guys so much for singing with us. You can go ahead and have a seat and turn your attention over here and celebrate baptisms with us this morning. Everybody, good morning. My name is Todd Bowman, and I am so excited that we get to celebrate baptism this morning. So we read in the Bible that Jesus taught his disciples that they were to go in the whole world and teach the good news. And the good news is that he had come to pay our price on the cross. And for anybody who chose to accept his free gift of salvation, we're to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So you might be asking, what is baptism? What's it all about? Baptism is simply the outward expression of that inward decision to accept Jesus' free gift. It symbolizes our old life dying and our, our new life being brought back in Jesus Christ. That's all there is. So as we do here at the summit, we, we love celebrating baptism and I hope you guys would help me do that this morning. Would you guys please welcome Lachelle into the pool? So Lachelle is Brian Geiger's wife. Brian serves here at the summit with uh, the Forsyth County Sheriff's Department. So you've probably seen him around in uniform. And uh, Brian and Lachelle have been through a really tough time recently. A lot of you probably know that. They lost one of their sons back in July. And Lachelle had been turning to, um, not only to God, uh, but also some other avenues and just wasn't getting the help that she needed. And she realized she, she really needed to depend on the Lord. So she has gotten into the Word. She's, she's communing with the Lord daily and now feels like her next step is baptism. And through this, she's experiencing healing. So Lachelle, I would like to ask you, have you placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone as your personal Savior? And are you ready to declare that publicly through baptism for everybody here this morning? Well, then it's my honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Would you guys pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time of celebration through baptism. Thank you for Lachelle. Lord, we know that you have her we, and we, that you have all, uh, Brian and the family through this hard time. Thank you so much for giving her the, the willingness to move forward with this next step. Lord, we ask that you would continue to meet with us this morning. Thank you for blessing our service. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wasn't that awesome? One of the most exciting things we get to do and be a part of. And I love it. Hey, by the way, we got people still trying to come in and find seats. If you happen to have empty seats next, next to you, or can, can you just scoot to the middle, everybody? Just scoot to the middle. I can tell by looking. Everybody showered, so <laughs> we should be good. We want to make sure everybody gets a seat to help our uh, guest services people. Now, we got some... Oh, there's some stuff in the spit zone down here. Look, there's empty seats all along. And over here on this side over here, I can see some. And it's great. Thank you. Hey, hey, listen. What you just saw, baptism. Just a beautiful display. That is what some of you need to do. For some of you, that is your next step with God in your journey of faith, in your journey with God. 
We believe that following Jesus is worth celebrating. And, and Jesus gave us baptism to celebrate it publicly. Here's the deal. Somewhere along the way, maybe in the past week or month or year or handful of years, it has dawned on you that Jesus is not only the Savior of the world, but he is your Savior. Somewhere maybe in the past recently, it has come to your attention and dawned on you, and you find yourself, maybe as a surprise to you, trusting in Jesus. And wanting to follow Jesus. Well, if that is you and you have never publicly proclaimed your faith in Jesus to the world, and this is the world right here, then we encourage you to be baptized. Because here's the deal. Your faith in God is personal, but it was never meant to be private. And there is a difference. And so we encourage you and I encourage you and I welcome you and challenge you to take this step to be baptized. And so if that's you, you say, man, I'd, I'd love to be baptized. We'd love to get you signed up. We even have baptisms coming up on Easter weekend. What a cool and memorable moment to be publicly proclaiming your faith and baptism on Easter weekend coming up in about six weeks. That would be phenomenal. Uh, if we got room, we'd, we'd love to baptize you then. So here's what you do. When the service is over, go out in the lobby to the gallery area, and that's that area that's glassed in to your right. And we have volunteers there that would love to talk with you about baptism. Or if you're a little bit more introverted or you're in a hurry and you don't want to do that, that's fine. You just take the next step card out in the seat in front of you, fill that out, check baptism, put it in the tall wooden box, and we'll follow up with you then. Let's publicly proclaim our faith in Jesus. We invite you to do that. Okay, so y'all ready for week two of In Repair? Here we go. This is week two of our series called In Repair, where we are talking about how God brings healing to our lives. And if you missed week one, you need to go back and catch up on that so that you're up to speed, because what we learned together last week is that when God is healing us and repairing us, that's a process. It's a process. Sometimes it's a quick process. Other times it's, it takes a while and it's a little bit more drawn out than we would like, but it's a process. And God's healing is a partnership. We partner with God in our own healing. And that's a surprise to a lot of us that we actually have a role to play and work to do and things that we can do to come alongside God. And we saw that how sometimes God's healing is like now in the moment and other times it's more not yet, that sometime in the future, maybe a little bit later on, maybe a lot a bit later on, but it's coming. God will bring healing to us eventually. Today, I'm going to give you a picture of what all that looks like, hopefully in a way that you will never forget it so you don't miss it, because often we miss it, and we want to better understand and better lean into how God repairs us. And so to kind of get us thinking, I want to, I want to begin kind of bringing us back to our childhood, just I mean, when we were little bitty kids, and I think all of us can remember, at some point, it, it kind of occurred to us an assumption that we just, we kind of learned, and maybe you were a little bit younger than me, and I'm not sure how young you were, but I remember about the age and the time when I began to realize an assumption, that all of us began to assume that hurting is bad, Right? Nobody really told us that. We didn't have to sit down and mom and dad do a little tutorial on pain. No, no, we got it. We got it. Hurting is bad. Pain is bad. So I don't want to hurt and I don't want to be hurt because that's just the assumption I make. It's a pretty safe assumption, don't you think, that hurting is bad? 
Now, I, again, I don't remember when I first came to this, but I can remember like the first scenario that really made this come to life to me, and it's going to the doctor and getting shots. Anybody? Yeah? We're going we're to go back to a moment. You're going to feel this. This is painful. Going to the, now, the first one, they, he surprised me. Right? The first ones, you don't know what's going on. I mean, like, I'm not talking about like when you're a baby and it's a silent scream, you know, that, <laughs> you know, like, I trusted you, I thought you loved me, and what, what are you doing here? No, I'm talking about, you know, you're, you're three, you're four, now you understand a little bit more, and you're just there, and the doctor's distracting you, like, oh, look at the rainbow, look at the butterfly, and you know, what, what are you like? Oh, you like cars, wham! Ah! I, totally! Broke my trust. I don't want to come back here ever again. And the finger prick. What in the world is that? Right? Because now I have evidence that I'm dying right on the edge of my finger. It's blood. <laughs> yeah. And so here's the deal. I learned very quickly. One time of that, and I became suspicious of doctors and doctor's offices from that moment on. And every time I would go to the doctor, for no matter, no matter what it was, I'm constantly watching the doctor's hands. Yeah, he's trying to distract me over here. I am not a dumb. I'm not falling for that again. I'm looking for any shiny object, any pointy object, anything in his hand. You know, he's got his hand. What you hiding back there? What you hiding? Because I don't want pain. Hurting is bad. I can remember freaking out just driving by doctor's offices. You're not taking me in there. Now, we're not slowing down. This is just a red light, right? We're going to keep going, right? Hurting is bad. Now, that kind of expands as we get older, and we begin to avoid Check this out. We begin to avoid. We learn this. Hurting is bad. So we begin to avoid anything, anyone, or any situation that brings pain. It's, some of it's survival. Some of it's a survival mechanism. But we, we've learned. We learned the hard way. So I'm going to avoid any, anything, anyone, or any situation. And we spend so much time avoiding and so much energy trying to avoid it. And so much worry trying to avoid it. And it takes so much of our focus trying to avoid anything, anyone, or any situation that brings pain. And as we grow into adulthood, it begins to get a little bit more complex. And we begin to put things together. And we begin to avoid anything in our lives that reminds us of weakness. And that we are weak and insufficient in any way. Why? Because that's painful. And we assume that hurting is bad. So I want to avoid admitting that I have issues. I want to avoid admitting that there's weakness in my life. And, and as we grow into adulthood, we begin to put it together and, and we want to stay away and avoid anything that reminds us that we are broken or brings brokenness to us. Why? Because brokenness hurts. And so I want to avoid being broken. And, and then we begin to avoid any woundedness in our lives, right? Because wounds are bad. And so I don't want to be around anything that can wound me or anyone. So now I isolate and insulate. We begin to isolate ourselves and insulate ourselves because, okay, I know that's why I don't do relationships. That's why I don't trust. That's why I don't take risks. That's why I, I, I'm not going to apply for that job because I've been hurt. That's why I'm not going to go on that date because I've been hurt. That's why I'm not going to open up again because I've been, and we start Avoiding because of, no, hurting is bad, hurting is bad, hurting is bad. What if, what if there was another way to interpret our pain? What if there was a better way? What if there was another way to understand our brokenness? Because I believe there is, and that's what we're going to talk about. Another way to understand our brokenness to actually help us understand how God heals us and how God repairs us. I want to take you back to the first century to a guy by the name of Paul. And we talk a lot about Paul. And the reason we talk a lot about Paul, because he's a, a pretty big character in the, in the New Testament. He wrote so much of the New Testament, and a lot happened to him. A lot that we can identify with, as, as you will see in the next few moments. What we see in the life of Paul is something I think all of us are going to be able to relate to. Because, see, Paul had... Something going on in his life that brought brokenness, a lot of brokenness. Um, it was something that brought pain. It was something that caused some challenges and an issue. We're not exactly sure what it was. I've, I've heard debates between theologians and scholars and historians on what it was that Paul was referring to in his life, and we don't know exactly what it is. I have a hunch. Other people have hunches. They're just hunches. We don't know for sure, but it really doesn't matter. Whatever it is... 
it was breaking him. Whatever it was, he considered it in the way. Whatever it was, it was something he wanted God to remove from his life. Can you relate to that? Can you relate to that in your own life? Maybe you got something going on right now that you just wish you could have avoided. And you tried. And you've hoped and you've prayed. And yet here you are in places and in situations you never dreamed would happen to you. Yeah. This is what happened This is what happened with Paul. Again, it was so big and so bad. Paul actually called it a thorn in his side, a thorn in his flesh. That's a big deal. He says three times, three times, I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. Three times. You know what this tells me? This tells me this is not going the way he wants. This is not going well for Paul. Okay, Because if it goes well, see, it's like, okay, God, um, this can you please take care of that? Could you please remove that? The guy's like, no problem, bud. Done deal. Now, does God do that? Sometimes he does. But in this certain instance, and maybe in the instance of your life with what you're facing right now, it ain't happening. So he asked him again. Oh, God. Hey, listen, maybe you didn't hear me the first time. I had food in my mouth. and was just praying. I should have said, you know, I'm, I'm just so sorry. Could you? Could you? Nothing. Goes back a third time. He said three times. Three times. So whatever this is, Paul is completely convinced he would be, get this, better off and stronger without it. Watch. But God said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Now, I don't know exactly what Paul was thinking right there in that moment. The first time that God told him that, the second time or the third time, but I'll tell you what I would be thinking. I'm like, I, I don't want that. It's not what I want. I don't want grace. I don't want none of that, 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 that Bible answer stuff. No, 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 no. That's not what I, I want this issue gone. And God, I know you can do it because you're God. I want this taken care of, this thing in my life that is bringing brokenness to me. I need you to remove it. I said, no, that's not what we're going to do. I'm not going to remove it. I'm going to use it. Now, that's tough. I'm not going to remove it. And I know you've always assumed that things that are painful are bad. But in this instance, this thing that is painful in your life is not all that bad. Not in the end. Because I'm not going to remove it. I'm going to use it. And I'm going to use it in such a way that my grace will fill your life so that it will make you strong. Isn't that interesting? It's interesting that the very thing that Paul was convinced he would be stronger if he didn't have in his life, God is saying, no, you're going to be stronger not because I remove it, but because of it. So as a result, Paul kind of wrestles with this and he comes to this conclusion. Therefore... I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and insults and hardships and persecutions and difficulties. And there's so much here. There's so much spiritual maturity here that goes way beyond me and you a lot of times. I wish we had time to unpack this. We will at another time, but I want to come to this right here. Here's his conclusion. So I've learned that when I'm weak, I'm strong. You see, Paul found himself, going back to last week, in this category of not yet. Take it away, take it away. Nope, not yet. I'm going to allow it, and I'm going to use it. And Paul said, I've learned that when I'm weak, I'm strong. Isn't that counterintuitive? Then it seems something's up with that, right? Because I've always assumed, and maybe Paul was thinking, uh, when I'm strong, I'm strong. And when I'm weak, I'm weak. That makes sense, right? That's kind of the way we were taught. That's kind of what we figured out in life. Hurting is bad. When I'm weak, I'm weak. When it stops hurting and I'm strong, that's when I'm strong. And God's like, no, 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 no. You need to learn. That it's actually through the weakness that I will bring healing to your life to create strength. So, the pain we don't want, Paul says, brings a strength that we do want. And actually a strength we do need. And Paul discovered that his pain was actually a pathway to the power of God in his life. That's hard. 
But what this helps us understand and that we notice and learn from all of this is that we hurt and heal at the same time. We hurt and we heal at the same time. We are weak and we are strong at the same time. They happen simultaneously, in the same moments, in the same breaths, in the same day, on the same days, at the same time. It's not that you hurt, you hurt, you hurt, you hurt, and then after all the pain is over, and after all the hurting is gone, then we'll get to the good part, the fun part, and that's to heal, heal, heal. You know what happens simultaneously? And so when you're weak and you're dealing with, I can't, I won't, I don't, I'm not, you fill in the blanks on your weakness. Those are the moments that God is like, I got you. I'm healing you. I'm putting you back together. I am mending you. I am molding you. I am helping you. I'm going to make you stronger. And that is an act of my grace. We hurt and we heal at the same time. I mean a light bulb moment. This is like a light bulb moment for us. It is for me. But see, here's the deal. You're super smart people. <laughs> You're very intelligent. So if you'll stop and think about it, you know this. You already know this. You just got to put it together. So let me help us put it together. We know already in life that many times to avoid pain is to delay healing. To avoid pain is to delay healing. That's what that surgery you had was all about. Think about it. Are you hurting? I'm hurting. I'm hurting. Go to the doctor. You got to help me, doc. I'm hurting. I'm hurting. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to cut you open. We're going to make you hurt worse. We're going to cause, whoa, 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 whoa. I, I need you to fix this. I don't need you to add insult to injury here and give me some ripped open scar. Now, the scar's cool. I love the scar. Scars are great. You know, it makes me all tough and everything, but I didn't. Really? Yeah, that's what surgery is. Think about it. They cut you, they cause pain, and you're going to miss work. You're going to have all this therapy you got to do. You, you got all these exercises, and it, I mean, you're not going to be able to eat for a few days, and then it's going to hurt to eat, or whatever your injury was. You're not going to be able to move, and then you're going to have to move. We're not going. We're going to get you up like 30 seconds after the surgery, and we're going to make you run laps, okay? Because <laughs> that's the way you heal. Wait, that's what physical therapy is all about. We probably have people that do physical therapy in this room and watching online and our other locations. And if you've ever had physical therapy, like, I don't want to move it. It hurts when I'm, well, you're going to move it this morning. Good morning. <laughs> Here, bite down on this and move that sucker. Here we go. Here we go. You can do it. You can do it. You know, the only thing I want to move is my fist. And <laughs> Woo! That hurts. But this is how it heals. You stretch it and you move it and it hurts, but... And, and, and then they say stupid stuff like, you know, no pain, no gain. Like, who came up with that? Ridiculous, but we know it's true, right? To, to avoid pain is to delay necessary healing. That's exactly what Paul is talking about here. See, we got to be careful not to misinterpret our pain. Because the pain we feel is often a pathway to the power of God being displayed in our lives. And we misinterpret our pain, that it's all bad and it needs to be avoided. And I just need it out of my life. And God, take it away, take it away, take it away. And we misinterpret our pain. And when we misinterpret our pain, we miss the point. We miss the point that it's actually through our pain that God wants to bring healing. And so the strength you want and the strength you need in life, many times, more than we like, will come through the pain we wish we could have avoided. We hurt and we heal at the same time. And that's a good thing. It's a great thing. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Let, let, me, let me show you. This is what a lot of us think life is supposed to be about. Beautiful, flawless, no issues. Look at this. I mean, there's no cracks in it. It's great. Terracotta pot. Beautiful. Beautiful. This is what we pray for, right? This is what we hope for. This is what we work for. This is what we expect and anticipate. Pain-free, problem-free, flaw-free. Now, yes, I get it. I get it. We're all sinners and we got, all got issues. But that's not how we, that's not our expectations. Our ex expectations are, well, see, I, I pray so all my problems should be taken care of. Oh, I, I go to church. I'm here. And I'm sitting beside somebody I don't know, and it's very uncomfortable. 
and they made me scoot in. I'm just now getting over this. I'm here, and I serve, and I give, and I volunteer. Hey, God, I expect this as a result. Shouldn't this, and this is what we, and here's the kicker. This is how we view other people, too. Perfect. Flawless. They got it all together. We know, we know, we know they do because we follow them on Instagram. <laughs> Just look at her. Look at her walking in here like, oh, of course, she still looks like she's 18. And why wouldn't it be her? It's always her. It's always, it's always her. It's always her. Look at him. Look at him. The truck and the wife and the kids and the job and the jet ski. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Why not him? It's always him. It's always him. Yeah, just, yeah. We look at other people and go, they, they got it all together. They got it all together. You ever gotten to a place where that is so frustrating? You just want to take your phone and throw it through the wall. You're like, done. I, I just can't look at it anymore. It's probably a good thing to stop looking at it because this, my friends, is fake. This is a mirage. This is not real. This is not your life, and this is not their life. You can pretend, and we'll get to some of this next week. You can pretend, you can wear a mask, you can assume that they don't have issues, and you shouldn't have those issues. And God should have removed it from you, and God probably has removed it from them. And we're all buttoned up, nice and tidy. Look at this. That is not real. Let me show you. What is real? This is real. This brokenness, shards. Sharp edges, pieces, issues, challenges, problem, pain. Can you identify with this? I bet you can. I bet you can. See, see no, one, no one is exempt from this. No one. Not even Christians. Not even Christians. In fact, wow, this is, this is a very popular topic, so we won't stay there very long. But Jesus actually said on more than one occasion that the closer you get to him, often the more of this you will experience. And there's a purpose for it. Yeah. But see, this is what it means to be human, guys. My friends, this is what it means to be human. And this is what it means to be in need of God and his healing and his repair. If, if I could, if I had enough of these pieces that I, that I could pass one out and, and everybody at all of our locations and everybody watching online, if everybody could have a piece and, a, and like a marker, I bet you would have no problem writing what is broken in your life that you so, like Paul, have been saying, God, take this away. God, take this away. God, make this not happen. God, make this, this fix this, remove this. I bet you know. You know exactly what you would put on your broken piece. In fact, you may ask for more. I need another. I need more. I need a handful. I want you to visualize that. Because all of us are broken. Any Princess Bride fans out there? Yeah, Princess Bride, one of the greatest movies. If you haven't seen that movie, don't come back to this church <laughs> until you watch it. <laughs> Some of you just won't laugh, will you? And I love you. We love you. We're so glad you're here. You need Jesus. Welcome. You remember what the dread pirate Roberts told Princess Buttercup? Life is pain, your highness. And anyone who says different is trying to sell you something. Right? 
Isn't that true? Isn't that true? My friends, this is not real. This is real. And this is you. This is me. Let me show you what it looks like. What your life is supposed to look like when God brings healing. This. This is real. This is you and me. This is a display of God's grace. This is what Paul was talking about. Paul wasn't talking about this. Paul was talking about this. This is what you are experiencing, whether you realize it or not, whether you feel like it or not, whether you like it or not. This is what you're experiencing through the love and grace of Jesus Christ. You see, here's the deal. Here's what makes this tough. Healing doesn't always look like we think it's going to look when it comes to our lives. Right? When God repairs us and puts us back together, we often think, ta-da! I'm all fixed up here. No, that's, this is not real. When God heals us, we look like this. Still got some flaws here. Still got some cracks. Still got some issues I'm dealing with. So, so it's not all fixed, but it's functional. <laughs> it's a pot again. It works. You could plant something in this and it would do just fine. Now it may leak a little. Anybody know what it's like to leak? Don't go there. <laughs> Any you people. Yeah. We leak. Yeah. This is what God is doing in your life. And what God is doing in my life. See, we often confuse healing and cured. And we think healing always means cured. Healing doesn't mean cured. You won't get cured and I won't get cured and we won't be flawless on this side of heaven, on this side of eternity. This is what heaven looks like and it's going to be so awesome. Until then, we heal. We heal. This is okay. This is good. In fact, as we will see next week, this is beautiful. You thought, you thought that because of all these cracks, somehow your value drops. You could not be more wrong. Look at all these stories. Scars tell a story of God's grace at work in your life. No, you haven't arrived. No, you're not there yet. No, you still got issues. Yeah, you still got to work through some stuff, but this is you. This is us right here. I love, I love what Leonard Cohen said. Leonard Cohen said it like this. There's a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. Isn't that great? Some of you are like, well, awesome, because I got a lot of light. I got room for lots of light. There's cracks all over the place. Great. And it is through those cracks and these cracks, and sometimes you can see light through it. It's, there it is. It's the light of God's love and grace and power and peace and mercy and strength and kindness comes through the cracks that you wish you could have avoided. So here's what we learned, that we are hurting. I'm hurting. You're hurting. We're all hurting. We all got this. But we live by healing. That's life. A little bit along the way, we heal a little bit more. We live a little bit more, and we heal a little bit more. We live a little bit more, and we heal a little bit more. And the grace of God is the glue. The grace of God is the adhesive that holds us together and puts us together. And I can't fully explain it, but I can tell you this is what it looks like. And I can tell you that it's true. Doesn't take the pain away. Doesn't mean that you're not still going to have a few pieces over here that God hasn't fully put back into place yet, but he will. 
Sometimes now, other times not yet. But it's a process for you to partner with him in the healing and repairing of your heart and soul and your life. Now, I don't know where your brokenness is, but understand, whatever your brokenness is, as you heal and grow and mature and become more like Christ, it is your pain that God will use to accomplish all of that. For some of you, your pain is fresh. It's new. Maybe a week old, a month old, a few weeks old. And it's raw. And you, you're barely here. Others of you, you have certain pieces of brokenness that you've been carrying around with you for years. And like shrapnel deeply embedded inside of you. They just seem to work their way closer and closer and closer to your heart. And from the outside, no one would know. From the outside, everything looks fine. From the outside, they may look at you and think you're this. But you're well too acquainted with these. You need to know that whether it's relational brokenness, financial brokenness, marriage brokenness, anxiety and depression brokenness, fear, worry, doubt, or something else that nobody knows about and I haven't mentioned. This is what God is doing in your life. Whether you know it or not, whether you feel it or not, this is what he's doing. It's a beautiful thing. He's repairing you and putting you back together. One more thing. A lot of times we look at all these pieces of brokenness and we think that these pieces are our undoing. This will be the death of me. This will do me in. I will never survive this. You look at the pieces of brokenness in your life and you think God is picking on you, that God is mad at you, that God has it out for you. Look at this. You think it's your undoing. No, 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 no. This is not your undoing. All of that brokenness is not your undoing. It's your rebuilding what it is. And this, my friends, is actually stronger than that over there. It is. You know it. Looking back, you know it. Because some of you have already come through some things in your life that have built your character and built your maturity to the point that now when you face certain things, things that would have really bothered you years ago, eh, you kind of take it in stride now. Why? Because God has done this. And you're like, you know what, years ago that would have really bothered me. But I don't worry about that so much anymore. You know why? Because you've experienced the process of the grace of God putting you back together. And you have scars to show for it. And you have stories. And yes, it still may be hard. And from time to time there may be certain movies that bring it back. Or certain people's faces that bring it back. Or certain moments that bring it back. And you, it's like somebody rips a scab off. And you go, okay, it's still a little sensitive. But you're here. And you're functioning. And you've made it this far. Another way to say it is this. You've already made it through the worst days of your life so far. Do you realize that? You've made it through already the worst that your life has to offer so far. And here's how I know it. You're here. Some of you are going, barely, barely, just barely. But you're here, aren't you? Yeah. The fact that you're here is evidence of this. One of our favorite poets, Donna, my wife and I, is M.H. Nichols, and she says it like this, through it all, you made it through. Through it all, you made it through. Through it all, you made it through. Your worst days In your life, you've made it through all of them up until now. You may have worse ones yet still to come. It could happen for you. It could happen for me. But even then, listen very carefully, you will hurt. And through that hurt, God will heal. 
You will hurt and heal at the same time. And God will heal and mend. And as he has before, he yet again, in greater ways than you can imagine, put you back together. And it is his gracious love and his gracious power that will accomplish it. Let's pray. Dear Father, I cannot even begin to imagine the level and the depth of the brokenness and the pain that is represented in this room and all across our locations and everyone that's watching online. It's overwhelming to me. My mind doesn't even have the ability to understand that much brokenness, but you do. It doesn't surprise you. It doesn't worry you. You don't freak out. You know exactly what to do with it, so we bring it to you. Help us, help me. Not to exhaust myself trying to avoid the things that you want to use to make me stronger. And that's hard, because I really don't like pain. We really don't like pain. But help us see a bigger picture, that even though we don't enjoy it, it's all not bad. Because as we hurt, we heal. We heal in ways that we would never have healed had we not hurt in the ways we hurt. I know what I would write on my broken pieces of pottery. and My friends, my brothers and sisters here are well aware of what they would write on their pieces. We bring them to you. We accept the process. Help us with it. We often grow impatient. We want it to be now. We know sometimes it'll be not yet. And we partner with you. We partner with your grace as you put us back together. Not flawless. Help us stop expecting ourselves to be flawless and ex assuming other people are. We, we bring our broken pieces to you for you to mend us back together. Not so that we are perfectly fixed, but so that we're functional again. A picture of your grace that glues us together and holds us together. And through it all, through it all, here we are. Through it all, we will go farther. Through it all, through your grace. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you guys stand with us as we take a second to respond to what it is we just heard. And if you know this song, feel free to sing it out with us. It is.
I was thinking about the words of that song, and I, I think we often confuse it is well with all is well. Okay? All doesn't have to be well for it is well to be true. All is well is a situation. It is well is a declaration. All is well may or may not be your reality right now. Matter of fact, all hell may be breaking loose. And yet, your reality can be it is well. No matter what. Because through it all, through it all, our eyes are on our Savior. He's gotten us this far. Through every worst day you've ever had, here you are. And that's not going to change. And our declaration for all eternity will be, we made it through it all, through it all. It is well. You know what? Let me, let me pray for you once more. Father, I know my brothers and sisters are carrying great weights, heavy pain. We know you love us. May we not misinterpret our pain and just assume that our pain means you don't. No, no, that's nothing could be further from the truth. It is because of your love that you do powerful things in spite of our pain. All of us have pain. That's life. It's just life. Nobody's exempt. And so we keep our eyes on you, knowing that through it all, you will get us through. And that's not a cliche. That is reality in every way. Whether we know it or not, can see it or not, and even when we can not even begin to feel it, feel it or not, it's true. And we thank you and we declare that all is not necessarily well, yet it is well. And even when all hell is breaking loose, you are putting us back together piece by piece. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, before you go, a couple quick things. Next week, here's why you need to come back to join us or be with us online if you're out of town. But there's nothing like being here. There's nothing like being here. I'm just telling you. Here's why you need to come back. Because what we're going to talk about next week is we're going to do a little bit further. And, and we're going to begin to open up a little bit and begin to see that we're not alone in this. We're really not alone. Um, you may feel alone, and that's why you may want to hide your brokenness and pretend and all that, and we'll talk about all that and hide behind masks, but you're going to leave next week very encouraged, knowing you are not in this alone, you are not in this by yourself, even though you think and assume sometimes you are. So very important. So you join us next week, and you need to also know, here's the second thing, we have a Thursday night service at 6.30 p.m. That's identical to this. And the reason it's so important for you to know that is that we won't have you scoot in right now. <laughs> you can come on Thursday night and have a little elbow room. There's still a few hundred people that show up, but you got a little bit more room, and maybe that'll work great for you. Thursday night, 6.30, same music, same message, same everything. It's actually the first service of the weekend, we like to call it. And it'll be an opportunity for you to get your church in early, and you know what? You can sleep in on Sunday or, or do something else. So, hey, that sounds pretty cool. Thursday night or Sunday, either way, we'll see you next week. Thanks for coming. Bye.